Hi, welcome to Dan Land. This morning, I was uh, feeding my pigs, and uh, all I was doing was picking up a bag of food, maybe 40 pounds or something. I went to lean forward, open the bag. I could feel my disc slip in my back, uh, or something like that. I think it was pretty minor, but I caught it on time this time. I hurt my back a long time ago, and once every couple of years, it kind of hurt my back a little bit. But, uh, I've learned, you know, if I sense it, quick enough. Just take it easy that day and usually it goes away pretty fast. Uh, I picked up this, oh, my point was I'm going to take it easy today. I'm not going to lift anything real heavy or, you know, work too, too hard at any one thing today. Take it easy. I was at a yard sale the other day and I got this for a dollar, this blower. It's like a double squirrel cage blower. Works pretty well and uh, I'm just going to plug it in and see what happens. Blowing out a lot of, a lot of lint. I don't know what it was for. It's got a ton of lint. It was for venting out some kind of machine or something. I don't know. So what I'm going to do with it today uh, is build a forge, and um, this will be a forge for bigger, bigger jobs. So uh, I won't use it very often, but it would be nice to have available to do like larger, longer pieces uh, that need a shitload of heat. So that's where this will come in handy. So the first step would be to build a plenum. Uh, what a plenum is, is you'll have uh, where a fan begins, it needs to uh, funnel all the energy of the air into, you know, one location. Uh, that's what a plenum is. Um, it's also the place where you begin to distribute the air. So uh, we're just going to measure this up on the inside of these little flares here. It's about nine and a half by about three and a half. So that'll be um, that'll be the beginning right there. And um, I don't know. Maybe we'll do a little quick sketch of what I have in mind. I actually don't have anything in mind. I'm going to come up with these ideas while you're watching. So. Uh, we'll have the blower over here, so here's the squirrel cage going out, and uh, we'll have a forge table of some kind, so we're going to start with like a table shape. Um, it'll have sides on it. Um, not a big fan of a deep firebox. Uh, I used to have a forge, and you may see it in some of my really old videos there that I had built and it was just a flat plate and it had a stainless uh, perforated plate in the bottom and it worked really well because if I wanted my fire higher up basically I just put more coal in it. The bigger your mound of coal the, the further up it brings the uh, fire and um, the only downside with this is you got to be a little more careful because the closer you get to that the more you're going to oxidize. So. Really, we just need a way to get the air in to a, the bottom. So there'd be a box like this. Um, it's nice to have it go low so that as it fills with crap, you can dump it. So we'll have this coming in the middle here somewhere. And uh, it'd be nice to have the blower out here where it can be maintained and kind of out of the way. Um, This will just be some sort of a dump. There isn't much to it, really. Um, there really isn't much to a forge. Everybody thinks it's so hard to make a forge. Really, all it is is, you know, a plate to support the work, an opening underneath where you can build a fire on top of the opening. Uh, it can even come in through the side. Like there are forges from mold that are they were designed that way. It was a side side blowing setup. Uh, from what I understand, it didn't work so good. That's probably why it's not around today. Um, and then you just need an air source and uh, high volume, something that has some push, but not not a lot of high velocity air. Um, if you think about it, it's kind of like if you had a campfire and you took uh, an air blaster, you know high velocity 
and shoot that into that little fire. Well, what's going to happen to that fire? You're just going to blow that fire all to hell. It's just going to go everywhere. It's just going to be too hard to control. So it's that's similar to like a blow dryer or a vacuum motor or something like that. A lot of people want to use those. I don't recommend that. Best thing you can get is just a high velocity or sorry, a high volume fan, low velocity, high volume. Uh, little little squirrel cage like this, uh, blower fan out of a car if you can transform it somehow because it's going to be 12 volt. Isn't hard to put a transformer on it. Um, uh, I've used bathroom fans in the past. Get the ones that are a little more CFM, like 100, 100 CFM, like they go as low as 55. Don't use those. So anyway, this this is like an ideal thing for a mechanical uh, forge blower because it's got huge CFMs, but not too huge. I mean, you don't need a fire with a thousand CFM motor going through. This may actually be too much. It'll be a huge fire. But uh, here we go. So let's give the blower a little blow. A little bit of lint in there. Oh, frick. designed um, uh, this will be added on after it's just too hard to bend that in the brake uh, it's just a little awkward shape but uh, it'll have to be bent in two pieces so we're gonna have like a cap here's what I've got so far on the plasma cam uh, I'll just highlight it here that's what we've got that's one piece and that's the cap so uh, we're gonna change our settings here to 16 gauge because that's what I'm making that out of. I have to change my travel speed to uh, 140 and uh, that's pretty good. Now I just gotta turn my fan on, get a little foot switch here and I just put this angle iron on there, get the fan going. Everything's good to go there I believe and we'll see if it goes with no issues not always a given. So here we go. Well there you go. I think it lost ground so sometimes you gotta take the ground off and put it right on the piece. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And then we just hit OK again and we'll just start it all over. piece here we uh, when I programmed it I program in little notches there so it helps me line it up and, uh, you just line that up where you're gonna bend it it's pretty simple it's not helping my sore back I tell you Got the top here, just gonna go on like that. I'm gonna weld that on. Just a few spot welds is all it really needs. It's not holding anything but air, so it don't matter much. Okay, so we got that all welded together. We got that hole blocked in there. 
there. There's a little bit of holes in there, but it ain't going to slow this blow down. So we're trying it out now, see how good it focuses all that air. Oh, yeah. That is sweet. That is a sweet column of air right there. I'm just guessing, some around five, 600 CFM. So. Okay, so this is what I've got for the firebox. Um, this will be a big pan uh, made of 1 8 and uh, bent up sides. The slots are in there just because it's going to be made of 1 8. My brake can only handle 14 gauge, so put the slots in there just to make the braking easier and uh, also drain your water and that sort of thing if it's left out in the rain. Um, this center part. Uh, that's not going to be cut out of the 1 8th. There will be a smaller hole cut out of the, this plate and then this will be cut separately out of stainless steel and then uh, vented up through. This little slot is where the air is going to come up through. Uh, I'm going to put a few joiners through there because I know that will probably warp a little bit. But uh, uh, We'll take it from there. So stay tuned for part two. We'll finish it up and uh, we'll get it going.